Hello, everybody. Hey. Hello, hey. you got? Is that Goonies? <laughs> it's, a, it's always strange coming into these rooms and there's multiple heads just floating <laughs> around. <laughs> uh, I will say to all of you first, congratulations on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I haven't seen all of it yet. I've kept a few episodes mm. for the weekend, so forgive me if I... I thought it'd be good, though, because I wouldn't give away any spoilers, so I thought that might be. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jeff, I wanted to start with you. Um, obviously, it's a, a project very close to you, of course. Um, was this the first time someone had tried to bring it to the big slash small mm. screen, or was this, for you, kind of the right time to to do it with well, the right people? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, no one had really, no one had gotten very far with an adaptation before Jim, you know, um, hmm. there'd been a, I think a couple times people sort of brought it out and tried pitching it around Hollywood and, and didn't really take it seriously. Cause they, <laughs> you know, I think, <laughs> I think people just didn't get it until someone like Jim came along and presented it to them in a way that they, you know, that made sense as a film or as a, a TV show. So no, it never really got very far before this. And I was just, I mean, I'm lucky that, the right person came along and and uh and did the show you know because it could have gone so many different ways you know yeah for sure and jim for you i mean what was the what was the lure of this and why why the television angle and not trying to condense it into a two-hour movie because it seems that a lot of things these days are trying to do a little bit more than maybe what people did 20 years ago yeah well um i read it when it first came out uh, as it was coming out and and loved it at the time and i was actually thinking of a movie at the time i just done a movie called Stakeland, which is has a very similar um feel in a lot of ways and it was like is this uh you know i really loved that world and and that kind of relationship and thought is this uh is this an even cooler version of that with this kid with antlers and 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 um tying in this whole nature idea and you know, I think very quickly you start to go, well, the, the thing that really works, I think, from the um, comic book is just how emotional it is and how you can sort of sit in moments in a way that I think is tough to pull off if you were to try to do the squeeze all this into two hours or so. Um, and so it kind of drifted away from that idea. And it wasn't until like 2016, um, talking to Team Downey, and they were already thinking, like, is there a series version of this? And then that kind of felt like the way the television had evolved and world building and, and especially even special effects had evolved. It felt like all of a sudden, like there was a version of this that could exist that way and uh, closer to the way the comics were. Yeah. And Beth, for you, I mean, what, what, what kind of sold you on this? Was it the, was it the comic book itself or was it kind of a combination of this plus what you were trying to do with the, with the show, with, with the Downies? It was, um, it was watching Jim's pilot. I didn't, I was hmm. not familiar with, um, Jeff's uh, comic book because I was working on his other comic book, Arrow. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I was uh, running that show for a few years and I was just finishing that when Warner Brothers called me and they were like, we're doing this new show. We'd love you to join the team, watch this pilot. And I was a new mom. I had just had like a, a baby who's only around eight months old. And um, when I watched the pilot, I was just like, Every, you know as you know because you've seen it now <laughs> um it was beautiful and so different from anything I had seen on on television and so heartwarming and just Christian's performance and I I just really really all of my heartstrings got pulled when he was looking to find his mom at the end <laughs> <laughs> and, so and Jeffrey, I mean, yeah and Jeff, for you, I mean, obviously it's your, as I say, it's your, it's your baby. I mean, and you're obviously in, in the process. Is it, is, it, is it strange to, you know, want to keep close to what you've created, but also know that to make it work as a television show, there needs to be a little bit of compromise. Is that a, is that a strange thing to be in that, in that space? You know, it really wasn't because in the last decade since I did the comic, I've done a lot of, I've been doing some TV writing as well. And I've, I've tried to adapt some of my own other projects myself. So I, I kind of, I had already understood that you need to make change. Even me, I needed to make changes to my own thing when adapting it myself. Just, just from one medium to the next, it's so different, and the timing's so different, and the way things play on the screen as opposed to the way they'll play when it's a drawing on a piece of paper can really affect the audience in a different way. So, I, I, you just know that it has to change. It can't be exactly the same. And so, I was very open to that, you know. And um, but I think the gym maintained the heart of the piece and all the central themes. All the characters are there. It still hits a lot of the same story beats and it's just sometimes presented in a different way, you know, and I, I'm really super happy with how the two, the two projects, the comic and the show can, 
complement each other, but still be their own thing. And yeah, I, I, you have to kind of be open-minded because unless you can control every aspect of it yourself, you'll go crazy. So you got to kind of like, go, <laughs> and you got to hopefully find, you have to be able to trust in whoever's doing it. And, and I yeah. trust Jim. So it was all good. Yeah. yeah. And Jim, obviously in this framework with Netflix being Netflix and being very much allowing you to be storytellers, you know, it's kind of old fashioned mm-hmm. in, in that way, whether it works on, doesn't work for some, for some shows, but that must be great as a, as a creators for all of you together to know that you're working for some people who will let you make the show almost exactly how you want to make it. Mm. It was, we had very good, you know, it's, it's great support along the way. You know, team Downey is incredibly supportive and, 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 um, you know, creatively involved, but also sort of fight for what um, we all think is right. Um, Warner brothers from the very get go, Warner brothers in DC, I think really fell in love with the, the very first draft of the pilot and fought for it to keep it intact, which, um, you know, is not always the case. And, and um, the same with Netflix, they, I think they embraced it for what it was. You know, we originally made the show for Hulu um, and had a similar experience there where I think they were very supportive, but it was interesting in a way then that Netflix saw the pilot and then it transitioned to them. And in a way it was kind of the best situation possible because they saw what the pilot was already and, we're just kind of like keep doing that basically you know it wasn't something where it was like all right how are we gonna how are we gonna do this i remember an early comment that we got to what jeff was talking about an early question that we got in early pitches back in the day was so does he walk on all fours (laughs) um (laughs) and so it was nice to be able to show people what it was going to look like and then have him be like yeah that that just do that so it was cool yeah and beth if you mentioned about arrow i mean when you're working with comic books all fans have their idea of what a film or a tv show of that character character should should look like so how much of a kind of balancing act is it to kind of trust yourself but make sure that you do enough to to kind of please the comic book fans who have their own versions of every single comic book in their heads (laughs) yes i you know i obviously had a lot of experience with that on arrow because people are you know, they fall in love with the comic book first, which is amazing. And, and they just have this idea of what the character should be. And so um, I sort of, what, what I brought over on Sweet Tooth as well, for me, it's about the story and the characters that, that we want to tell. And um, as long as we're honoring uh, what the intention of the comic book is, we, I allow myself the freedom to kind of veer into different territory. Um, and and, I, and also adding Easter eggs on the way, I think help a lot as well, wherever we can, um, you know, put something from the comic book, you know, whether um, it's Sal's bar, which we put in seven, which is we got from Sal's uh, grocery store, is that right? Yeah, Sal's the, in the comic book. Um, just little things like that to make sure um, that we're, you know, honoring the comic book and the fans but we can't be beholden to doing it exactly how, how the comic book is because they've already read that. So there wouldn't be any surprises and um, then it wouldn't be an adaptation. Yeah, absolutely. If you, I will say this before I go, if you hear from Christian, uh, if you, if you end up doing a season two per se, you might not, I don't know. Cause it's a one deal thing. If he mentions werewolf to you, that's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> because he had his antlers behind him. And I love the kind of practicality of Rick Baker doing American Wealth in London. And you've got a thing poster behind you. So I mentioned yeah. it to him. He thankfully said, I haven't seen that, which uh, <laughs> which not they thought was a good thing for his parents not to have shown American Wealth in London. So if he mentions <laughs> yeah. werewolves, it's my fault. Uh, and I will be asking Robert Downey Jr. for a check in the post. That's what I'm <laughs> uh, guys, I he really probably- enjoyed the show. Christian was Sorry, probably on. born after the sequel to American Werewolf. <laughs> just to no, put it was equal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I often yeah. find myself being like, you know, from such and such, and he gives you a blank look, and you're like, mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, there was because of the because of the Zoom, there was even more of a delay, so it felt even sure. more awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't even know what werewolves are. <laughs> but hey, one day he'll, he'll find out. Uh, guys, thank yeah. you so much for your time. Absolute pleasure thank talking you to so you much. all. Thank you so much. Everything. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Is that from the Goonies? Nice. Hey!